how are you guys doing? And welcome back to Trails of Cold Steel with me, your girl No Fuses. Uh, we were running around, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure we're about to go back into the school, so without further ado, let's get into it. And if you guys like this video or this series, then please don't hesitate to destroy that like and subscribe button. Okay, first things first. I know we got a little bomb points, so let's do that. But who do I want to hang out with? There's only four, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot more going on here. He's here. Okay, so I think I know who I want to be hanging with. Because I, I, I gotta choose wisely. There's only four. That's the bookstore. Oh, there you are. You're the first one. Hey, Yusuf, I don't see you around here too often. Well, I have some things I need to purchase. Oh, stuff for the writing club? Well, not exactly. Anyway, don't mind me. It's something of particular importance. Well, he's definitely got something on his mind. Yes, I'll spend time. Well, I'm here. I got some time to spare. Why not tell me what's up? I might be able to help you out. You really do enjoy sticking your nose into other people's business, don't you? You buying wine? Is that what this is? Or that could be olive oil. I don't know. So your uncle and Bar has sent you a letter then. He ran that one restaurant, right? Oh, maybe it is olive oil. Correct. It seems that he caught wind of the fact that we were involved in the terrorist attack during the summer festival, which caused him to get word and send you a letter. Aha, uh -huh. just goes to show how much he really cares about you, huh? Hmm. There was no reason for him to be concerned over something so minor, especially as we're rarely contacting each other up until now. Uh -huh. Don't even try to hide it. You're happy about this, I can tell. Quiet. More to the point, I feel some remorse for causing him enough concern to feel the need to write. And so, as much, pain, as much of a pain as it will be, I feel as though it would be best to include a token of thanks along with my reply, which explains why you're here. If you anything you'd like, you'd like, you'd like for, to get good guy, I'm getting tongue tied here. Not quite. I rarely come to stores like this in the first place, so I don't even know where to start. Haha. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, sorry. I'm just relieved as well. It's nice knowing that Rufus isn't the only person you're willing to let into your life. Always looking for an opportunity to spell nonsense, aren't you? Putting your personal failings aside for the moment. Now that I've told you, you need to help me find something for him. I was counting on it. Olive oil. The two of them proceeded to browse the store for something appropriate. After some searching, they found a rare brand of tea. Damn, it's tea. That Reen used to drink back home and decided to buy that. Apologies for taking up your time. Uh -huh. Don't worry about it. I'm sure your uncle will be happy about this. One can only hope. Oh, next level? Oh, you bastards. It's right there. Alright, so who's next? Alright, so the next person in question is Crow. Where are you, my guy? Is it down here? Maybe? Yes. There you are. Oh, what are you doing, Crow? Yo, Reen, I love... I left something here yesterday, so I came to pick it up. Though, man, I'm always forget how much of a pain moving it is. I have to do it again. This is why I wanted to use my old room just to store stuff in. I wouldn't push your luck with that. Yep, we're gonna hang out with you. I don't mind giving you a hand. You look like you need it. You serious? Man, I guess they were right when they said you can't beat having a loyal first year at your beck and call. Oh, just to make it clear, this is unpaid labor, I'm afraid. Don't worry, I wasn't expecting pain from the guy who conned 50 mirror off me. Oh yeah, he did do that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, 
He loves him some money and some gambling. Yo. Oh, hey there. What's up, Crow? What's this I hear about you being a first year again? I heard worse. Did they kick you out already? Come on, you guys. No one would ever get want to get rid of me. Show a little respect to the guy teetering on the edge of his second first year. <laughs> You've only got yourself to blame for that one. So I'm guessing this guy's our first year in your new class, Crow. Yes, I'm with class 7. Well, how about that? Let me give you a little tip. Never drop a guard around this guy. Because he'll be in your pockets the second you do. Which he already did when we first met him. Look at Crow's face. He's just like... The disrespect. <laughs> That's literally his face right now. Hey, now. We don't want to give my new classmate here the wrong impression. Uh, trust me, I got all the impressions I need by now. This is ridiculous, Crow. Shut up and give me a hand here. This thing isn't going to carry itself. <sighs> you could at least ask nicely. Alright, let's go get the rest of the crew to help us out with this. Huh? Crew? He has a crew? That should just be about it. Thanks for the help, guys. Don't sweat it. Just make sure you pay back the money you owe me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> In that case, we'll leave you to it. Thank you for your help. Saying you just left the room. Really? Because they're still right there, according to the back of the screen. They left in a hurry. Oh, well, wouldn't have been able to move all down my own anyway. So I'll let it slide this time. I'm surprised you got some people to show you, show up to help. You really do have a lot of friends, don't you? Well, I've been here for two years now, right? Keep it up, and one day you might be as famous as old crow here. <laughs> I get the feeling that in order to be po that popular, I need to be old crow. All right then. Now that you've got your furniture, I'll say it once again. Welcome to Class Seven Dormitory. Haha, <laughs> thanks, man. Come on, next level. Thank you. Ooh, nice. Now, let's go talk to some of the ladies. Is she over here? Yes, she is. This is the first waifu. If you all remember from like the first first video I made of the series, ah, uh, the classic fall on top of the top of the girl cliche that they did. Oh, Lord. Ah. <laughs> uh, so she would be always be number one. I knew this would happen. Fierce can hardly go two sides for a challenge to be to some sort of competition. Aha, uh -huh. it's good to have a competitive spirit, right? <sighs> it wouldn't be so bad if Emily and Theresa didn't keep throwing more fuel in the fire. I thought she was thinking this in her mind half the time, which is why I said it in my normal voice. That's my bad. I don't think I have any choice but to accept at this point. Maybe I'll just stay around and see how this plays out. Yep, we're definitely gonna stay. Well, if you're going to accept your challenge, I'll have to stay around and give you some moral support. You're just as bad as they are. Fine, suit yourself. <laughs> well then, Ferris, what will we be competing today? Our competition today will be simple 50 arch race. I do hope that your breakfast wasn't too large because you're about to eat a bitter serving defeat. Whatever you say, Ferris. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Good luck, Lisa. So began yet another heated competition between Elisa and Ferris. Reen watched attentively as Ferris refused to accept Elisa's marginal victory. Again and again and again, Ferris's several rematches served only to direct out a quick and simple competition. And in the end... <sighs> Looks like Elisa's our victor. Impossible! I could be defeated after all my practice. The rest of us practice too, you know. I have to say, though, you've gotten a lot faster than you were before. You, you really have been putting in the hours, haven't you? That was a good match. Sort of like the several matches before. You two might want to rest up for now, though. D do not belittle me. I cannot accept this. I refuse to accept this. Ferris, where are you going? Lisa, we have to go after her. R right. Reen, Emily, and Elisa combed the whole camp to search for Ferris. However... Hmm, she must not be in the academy. Sorry about this, but would you two mind looking for her off campus? Of course. 
Where in the world could she be? She probably went to her room. Oh, never mind. She's being ambushed by wolves. So stay back. Do you know who I am? I'm daughter of Kefla. Do you think animals or monsters give two fucks about who your who your father is or what family you come from? No, they don't care. Help! Vincent! Elisa! Ferris! Elisa? Are we about to actually fight fight or is this gonna be like it just skips over the fight? And we just get back to the story. Let's take him out. Right. Okay, it's gonna skip over. Alright, I thought so. Ooh, there we go. It doesn't look like she's injured either, thank goodness. Are you alright, Ferris? You just had to choose the highway of all places to do your sulking. Uh, Alisa. For, for what purpose did you chase me out here? Are you here to laugh at me? Balloon me for losing to you? Of course not. There's no way I ever do something like that. Why is it so hard to believe that I just want to be your friend? That I want to train to get better with you? In honesty, I wanted to become friends with you as well. However, I could never once bring myself to admit that. So that's how you really felt. In that case, how about this? We can keep competing against winners, but as friendly rivals. There's nothing wrong with some sort of conflict between club members, or friends for that matter. Lisa! Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. I'm glad this all worked out. Thanks. Thanks, Reen. You really helped us out. <laughs> I didn't do anything much. Well, apparently, I'm glad we were able to help your friend. <laughs> I mean it. You're always there for me when I need you the most. I don't know what I'll do without you sometimes. And you'll never be without me, girl, because one day you two will be together forever. I, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> Awkward silence. We're right. I've got clean duty, so I'll gotta go. Sure, sure. See you later. Oh, you suck. Alright, I think... Oh, whoa. If memory serves... Who I'm looking for should be in the gym. Should be, it's a big should. Wait, maybe you're in here. Nope. Maybe... So Maybe? Yep, you are over there. Marga has been making great strides with her silk swimming lately. She may even reach her goal of swinging 50 R's today. And <laughs> seeing her push herself like that every day makes me proud to be one who coached her. I'm glad to hear it. She's been better to use herself ever since our field in Heimdall. Hmm, is something the matter? Nah, everything's fine, haha. <laughs> Should I try to help her out? I don't know what she help. needs help, but she's pretty strong. Even though she got her ass kicked by that freaking bone dragon. Poor Laura. 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 Hmm. She was taking one for the team in that battle. I think it'd be great to see her. Yeah. Ha, huh, you have my thanks. Now then, why don't you go change your swimsuit? Sure thing. Monica, today is the day you clear your 50 arch goal. Are you prepared? Yeah, I'm gonna let you down, Laura. That's the spirit. Bringing your jobs to swim alongside her and act as her lead. I'll be observing from the side of the pool. Just thanks for helping me out. No problem. I bet you won't be able to keep up. And so Maka began her 50 arch challenge. Oh, we're actually doing the challenge challenge. <sighs> you can carry this through to the end, Maka. I know you can. Come on, you're almost there. You're only three arch left. Two. One. She did it. <sighs> wait, wait, was that it? Did I do it? You did. You never even had to put your feet down either. Splendid work, Monica. I really did, Laura. Monica Starwood had finally paid off and she cleared her initial goal. Every last member of the swim club graduated her on her achievement, even those who didn't believe she could do it. All her hard work paid off. 
Thank you for being my sister today, Reen. Aha, it was nothing. I'm just happy to see that things are good between you and Monica again. <laughs> that makes two of us. I have now reconciled with both Monica and Fee. So I believe that, no, I believe that we will continue to grow from here on out. I hope that you and I will be able to keep supporting each other too. You can count on me. Yeah, I knew it wasn't even about to go halfway. I already knew. Alright, and that's all for us. So I have no more bomb points, so we have no choice but to head to the schoolhouse. I'm sorry, I lied. So, I noticed this little thing uh, before the schoolhouse, so let me fill this out and see what, what it is before then. Before I go to the schoolhouse, so we're gonna do this, this mission first, then go to the schoolhouse. Well, here you are. Hi, Reen. Thanks for coming. All right, Toa, what brings you here? I need a little break from work, so I, I came along to help George and Angie. We asked her to come and help out with the request we sent you. Oh, so she's working on the bike, too? Yep, the request is pretty much the same as last time, with one key difference. This time, we'd like you to ride with Toa at your side. By my side? Don't you mean behind me? Haha, <laughs> maybe it would be easier to show you what we're talking about. I believe it's time for the grand reveal. Wow. Impressive, isn't it? We call this the sidecar. Much like a bike itself, this was a Roar Institute of Technology prototype that George put the finishing touches on. You can probably tell, but the sidecar lets other people ride along with you. Though it's much closer to riding in an orbital car than it is like being on a second bike. That's pretty interesting. So you want me to test ride while Tell sits in the sidecar? Yep. That means I'm in your care, Reed. Try not to crash or anything. Right. I'll just make sure everything is smoothly and safely. Oh, don't worry about that. George and I have already done all the necessary safety tests. The goal of this test is to get a fresh perspective, just like last time. That's right. Be sure to give us as much feedback as you can. That goes for you too, Toa. Okay. So do you have the time to go for a ride? Hmm. Sorry, Rin. I'm always keeping you so busy. Oh, don't worry about it. How about you, though? Do you have the time? You seemed pretty busy yesterday. Hehe, <laughs> thanks for worrying, but I'm fine. I got most of the hard work sorted out yesterday, which means I've got the time to spare today. As you can see, George and I are ready to go whenever you are. We'll work to your schedule today. Thank you, well then. Leave it until later to start the testing right Yeah, you might as well start the testing right now. Why don't we get started right away? Great, let's get everything set up then. We're doing this on the nearby highway, aren't we? Yep, same one we tested the bike on last time. Just go super fast and then break hard. Just watch it fly. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. But, I mean, it's a good way to test the seatbelts, you know? Just, uh, just see if they work. Since they said they already did some safety tests. So how does it feel to be in the sidecar, Toa? <laughs> it's exciting. I'm a little nervous, too. Knowing Reen will be driving puts me at ease, though. Uh-huh. Thanks. Oh, Toa. Please don't say things that will make me envious like that. Now I have no choice but to send Reen home and ride you with, you with you myself. Sorry to cut you short here, Angie, but I can't let you do that. Remember we chose those two for a reason? Uh. Same test as last time, right? Starting to ride, shifting gears, and coming to a stop. Does the sidecar change things at all? Ahem. Actually, yes. The main changes are increasing weight and different center of gravity. Those two things will have a huge impact on how your bike operates. I recommend you approach this as a whole new experience because it's definitely going to feel like one. I never would have guessed, but what will I have to do? Basically, when the sidecar is attached, you will end up veering off towards its direction while you're accelerating. By the same token, while you're slowing down, you'll end up veering off in the opposite direction, which changes things a little for your test. Starting to move will pull the handbar to left. Starting to move will pull the handbar to the left, so make sure you turn it slightly right in advance to compensate. Next, when you're shifting gears, you need to turn the handlebar slight to the left when you disengage to clutch. 
The saying goes for bringing her to a stop, but the entry means she's going to be hard to slow down. Be sure to hit the brakes early than you did last time. Will do. It's like a whole different set of rules. It really is. But you should be fine if you pay attention to what you're doing. My advice for you, Toa, is believe in reading and focus entirely to you. So I'm going to fuck up this whole experience for her. I already know I am. I'm pretty sure I already forgot something. I think you'll have a wonderful time if you do. Second. That should help movie read too. How so? Well, think about it. I'll be happy knowing you're having fun and I won't want to make any mistakes to ruin that. Ah, that's so sweet. Well then, here's hoping that we'll be fun for both of us. Thanks, that's, that, that, thanks for hope. I'm about to fuck up this whole ride. I feel like I, I feel like I am, but hopefully I get everything right. All right, I'm going to start up the engine now. Haha, <laughs> it's all so exciting. Okay, get ready. You said I should turn the sidebar a bit, and then, then, I should turn the sidebar but when I started with Dinshi. Uh, no, left. Here we go. What? See, I already knew it was gonna fuck up. Sorry, I turned it the wrong way. Ah, uh, I'll say. Oh, don't worry about it. Mm, thanks. Let me try that again. That was a bit embarrassing. I think I know how to handle it now. I veered off to the side there, so, th so this time I need to turn the handle while the time is the other direction. See, you got it perfect this time. Yeah, sorry about that. See, I already knew. I was just like, I'm gonna fuck this up. And off they go. Yeah, it should be fun to talk to them when they get back. So how does it? So how is it? Does it feel different from when you rode alone? It definitely does. Jessica was right when she said it wouldn't handle completely different, and that's not the only thing. Oh, where else is there? Oh, uh, nothing. I'll think of something else. I probably shouldn't tell her that the excitement of riding with her is a bigger hurdle than the sidecar. Okay, I think we're both used to speed by now. Are you ready to go a bit faster? Sure. Right then, let's switch gears. Which way do I have to... while switching again? Slightly... I think slightly to the left. There we go. Perfect. Well, look at you. That went well. Thanks for the encouragement. Haha, <laughs> don't be sick. I'm doing it sitting here. This really does feel nice, doesn't it? The view from here is great, too. It's not for a refreshing sweet than I expected it would be. Yeah, but it always sucks to be on a motorcycle in bad weather. Snow, rain, all the good stuff. It's just like, ah. <laughs> oh shucks. Okay then, I guess we're about done. It's almost time for us to turn back, so I'm going to slow down a bit. Okie dokie, sounds like it's time for the final test. I said that the extra whip and star card means I should take a different approach to slowing down. What is it I had to do? Break harder break earlier than usual. It takes long for it to come to a stop with the extra weight, so I should put the brakes on earlier than usual. There we go, we stopped just in the right spot. I knew you could do it! Thank you, Reen. I had so much fun and we still have the journey back to look forward to. Haha, <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Why don't we take a little break before we go back then? Sounds good to me! It seems that things went well for the both of you. I'm impressed you could handle her at all with such a different hard way than the last time you rode. Thanks, I get the feeling I could have done better though. We really appreciate your help too, Toa. Seems like you ended up having a pretty good time at least. I did. It was a lot easier to just sit back and enjoy myself than I thought. Of course, it's all thanks to Reen. Ah, <laughs> not at all. The fact that you trusted in me and were able to enjoy yourself kept me focused on doing a good job. Well, I always trust in you, so today wasn't anything special. Let's nice hear you say that though. Hmm. It tears at my soul to say that. But you two make make for a good pair. I thought say the same thing. Well then I finish up the test. Let's head back to the engineering building. 
Two and a three ain't bad. Thank you for both your great, great data. Your feedback should come in handy when I'm tuning the thing. Always glad to help. You're planning on entering the data into the computer, right? Would you let me help you organize all of it? Really? That'd be a big help, but are you sure you have the time? Aren't you busy with your preparations for the trade conference? Wait, Tori's going to the trade conference? Huh, all right. I haven't told you, have I? The truth is, the Imperial government requests I go along to help with the major players. As such, I'll be heading to Crossbow for the trade conference as an assistant to the entourage. The, the, the entourage attend, attends to the Empire's represent during the meeting, right? And you're assisting them? Yeah, it's mainly involving helping out with paper and schedule, I imagine. I don't think I'll be much help, to be honest, but the government did ask. Tola's received a ton of job offers from all over the country lately. Everyone's just waiting for her to graduate. The trade conference invite is, is the government's attempt to sweeten the deal. Unbelievable. Does that mean you're planning on moving to the government work instead of the military? Oh, I still haven't decided yet. I'm kind of doing this just to broaden my horizons. And apparently, all this is because of the trouble in Heimdall last month. The government took a real interest in how quickly and efficiently she acted back with all the civilians. That explains it. Uh huh. I, I said class would end up doing a lot more than I ever could. I even had to help and help from Angie and Crow too. Even then, it was thanks to your instructions that we were able to split up and handle everything so efficiently. If you did decide to enter the military, I think you'd make a splendid commander. If they had a uniform small enough to fit her, at least. Hey, no teasing allowed. Either way, best of luck. I'm sure we'll be in the middle of another field study by then, but I'll be praying that things go well for you. But thanks, Reem. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is starting to look way too much like a sappy ten mirror novella. Let me just step in right here and keep you two from stumbling into a badly written fantasy. What kind of novels are you reading? She's, uh... She's reading those uh, fan fiction lemons and limes. That's that's what she's reading. <laughs> she's reading some uh, some uh, erotica. <laughs> I can tell that's what she's into. Was it something I said? Now, now, ask a question for only encourage her. Change the subject before this gets out of hand. Thanks for helping us help us test out the bike again. This is for you. Volcanic rain. Ah, just glad I could help. See you later. Then Reen, good luck investigating the old school house, too. Au revoir. You'll be the first person we ask if we need any more help. Alright, that was a nice side mission. And now, we're now we're gonna head off to the schoolhouse. Alright, and we're back at the good old schoolhouse. The front doors are locked. Once I start exploring the old house, I doubt I'll have time for anything else today. Hmm, should I just head on in? I think, I think I went ahead and I did all of the stuff for today. I'm pretty sure I did all of the things I were supposed to do. But let me just make sure. So you don't say, oh, you didn't do this. Ah, uh, lately the Argos have been going on about some mysteries of the academy. I desired, I said this much, if you do visit the Occult Research Society Club. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, guys, never mind. Apparently, I did miss a mission. Crap. I thought I did them all. All right, so let's do this one. And then we'll go back to the squirrels. I'm sorry, I keep lying to y'all. I keep lying to y'all so hard. Uh, But we will make it over to the occult's research, which should be nearby, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, there she is. <laughs> Welcome to your cult research society. What kind of fortune would you like me to tell for you today? Reen of class 7. Health. Romance. I can even give life advice if that's what you wish. Sorry, I'm not actually here to get my fortune told. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm well aware of that. You were set by the student council, weren't you? You could at least play along a little, though. You're not much fun. I'm kind of fun? Beryl's a strange one, alright. She's got quite the reputation amongst the girls as an uncannily accurate voice channel, though. Hehe, <laughs> there's something you'd like to ask me, is there not? Answers are merely a question away. Do you wish to know what kind of rituals and curses are my favorites, perhaps? That's probably the kind of thing I'm better off not knowing things. Wait, she didn't just read my mind, did she? 
Ha! Nah, she couldn't have. <laughs> so I've seen you've been informed of what I want you to do. Yeah, you want me to look into the Academy of Seven Mysteries, right? Precisely. The sooner you can start investigating, the better. Are you ready to begin? Hmm. Sure, I'm ready when you are. I know a lot of schools across the country have mysteries like these, but I didn't know that Thor's had a set all on its own. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could give you the good news. They've become a hot topic amongst some of the girls recently. Huh? I wouldn't have guessed that. But you said that you wanted me to look into some mysteries. Does that mean you don't know what all of them are and want me to find out what information you're missing? No. I know the base of each mystery already. What I'd like to ask you to do is to investigate how credible each one is. I see. So is that something I'll really be able to investigate though? I mean, if they're supernatural. You can just think of that part of your investigation. If you can't come to any conclusions, so be it. Either way, to be more specific, I'd like you to talk to some people most likely to know something about each mystery. I could do it myself, but I'm not exactly what you would call a people person. <laughs> Right. Okay. I think I get what you want me to do. Want me to do? Can you give me a head start by telling me what you know about each of the seven mysteries, though? Hmm. I think if I told you everything at once, it might be so much horror to take in that it would stop your heart. So ask about them one by one, and I'll tell you what I know about each. That sounds like a good way to do it. All right. I'll leave the investigation to me. <laughs> Thank you. I look forward to hearing about what you discover. So I literally gotta run around the entire school and find what people know about these mysteries. Alright guys, so after a lot of running around and talking to several people, I could not beat this mission. I don't know if it's a glitch in the Matrix, maybe I did something wrong, but I literally could find no one that was related to the mission at all. Like, there was no, no blips on the map. I talked to several different random people just to see if that's what I had to do. I went to Trista and throughout the entire campus and there was nothing related to the mission anywhere. Like, I don't know what was going on with that. So I just gave up. Um, if anyone knows, uh, just leave me, uh, let me know in the comments and uh, see what I did wrong. But hey, I'm gonna have to take a hit for that one mission that I didn't do. But let's just continue on and Head to the schoolhouse, like I promised. Alright, time to sound out the car. The car! Ka -ka! <laughs> I promise I'll take Crow and Moon with me this one. So, literally, I, I literally have to take them. Who else should I invite? So I have three more spots. Um, I know these two were heavy. My God, I'm weak in comparison. These two are heavy heat hitters. Um, definitely need a healer. That's for sure. So you're coming with me. Um, you're coming with me. And who else do I want to bring? These two are both long range. He's kind of like medium range. You're up close range. So let's bring another up close person. So I'll bring Usus. Find his party? Yes. <laughs> She's gonna like, what the? Huh? So this is what it looks like inside. And you say weird stuff happens in here every month? Yeah, just like I told you yesterday. This will be our fifth trip in, but. We have no more of an idea of what we might find there than you do. Yeah, there's no telling what could happen, especially after last month. Who'd have ever expected the red door, right? Or a giant armor. Green's sister ended up in harm's way due to what happened as well. Yeah. I'm just glad that she was alright. Huh? You might tell me about that. Anyway, let's get down to business. Don't worry, I'll cover you if things get too rough than that. Ha. Chances are, I'll need it. Alright, let's go. And off we go to the depths of the abyss. Cause look, we got like one more chamber and we have beaten every single one. The fifth door is lit up on the display. Guess that means we should be able to descend to the lower level now. Ooh, ooh let me see. I still don't understand how this place does what it does. Huh? 
What's wrong, Shirts Dad? Something bugging you? Well, uh huh. Sorry, I have no clue how this thing works. Would you stop being such a tease? Anyway, let's head on down. No, she knows something she just didn't want to tell. She was like, mm, I better keep my mouth shut about this. And it's like, no, we need info. We need to know what's happening. Oh, yeah, let me get a piece of the action. So we have the fifth floor and more enforcers. So six floors in total. Or seven. Maybe. I'm looking at the little numeral numbers and I'm like, maybe seven, maybe? I hope I don't have to deal with the stone butterflies this time. I hate them so much. So this is for floor five. Seems so. There's a strange sort of presence looking in the air here too. Right. Which like on the level above. The higher elements seem to be in effect here as well. No surprises here. Huh? So it's the same as that ancient quarry back in Nord? That's so cool. You can see stuff like that though. You know what's even cooler? Being able to control that giant sewer thing you've got. Good point. <laughs> really? Let me! Alright. We got some exploring to do. You guys just leave this to me and Lemon. We'll smash through anything. Aha, uh -huh. we're counting you then. This is a good chance to get used to fighting together. Maybe even try out some combat links. Yay! It's hard to feel tense with Melon around. Hey, it's better than everyone being on edge for you to jump at anything, right? Anyway, I'm ready to roll. Alright, careful down here, everyone. I mean, they don't need to rest. They can just go down here. All right, let's get exploring. There's a giant turtle to my right, and my teleporter to my left. Oh, this looks like the end. Alrighty. Yep, we finally made it to end. That was easier than the earlier levels. The rulers made it so much harder. They made it so much more difficult. You're just like, oh my god, where is the freaking end of this freaking labyrinth? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Please don't let it be the statues. Please don't let it be the statues. Please do not let it be the freaking statues. Oh my, it's worse than the statues. He looks like he has electric powers and ice, maybe even water powers. This one's nasty. Watch out. Yes, sir. Our 
this active attack. Leave it to me. Arcus activate. Huh. <laughs> Thanks. Oh no, you don't. to me. Shield us from harm. Crescent Shadow. I'll show you how it's done. Woo, we are so close right now. We are so close. It's not even funny. Let's go.
Come on, he's got just a little bit left. Come on. Just one or two more attacks and he's done. My turn. Arcus activate. Come on, is this it? Is this it? Come on, come on, come on, come on. <gasps> yes! Yes, thank you! Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm so glad this is done. Whew, I was starting to stress about this battle. I was starting to stress so hard about it. So, what I came to realize after a couple of defeats is that the game was literally trying to help you beat this beat this boss because this boss was so strong for no reason. He was stronger than all the previous bosses combined. Which I mean, yeah, you expect the the dungeon boss to be stronger than the previous one, but this one was stronger than all of them combined. Like one hit, and he took like half your health, and plus he got to do it again. Which killed the character, and you're just kind of like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this? So, what I realized is that the game itself was trying to help you defeat him by giving you all the S breaks. Everyone, I think almost everyone was able to activate it. So, basically, for anyone who plays this game or gets to this level, and you got all your S breaks, go ham on that motherfucker. Just go guns ablaze and everything you got, your top... Your top attacks, which is the experts, just going at them over and over and over as much as you can. And for me, I was trying to get all of their EP and CP back so I could like do it again because it, because they were taking all of his health so fast that I was just like, yes, take him out. Because your little attacks, they they barely leave a scratch on him. You need to hit him hard, like hard, 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 hard. Like no matter what the the CP. CP or EP cost is like you have to don't conserve it because that was what I did for the first round for the first round I tried to conserve it and wait till I like got to half I couldn't even get to half of his health Before before I can even use an S break and by the time you try to use an S break who either freeze you or take you out So we just kind of like dang it So yeah, that's why this battle was was really hard until you like figured that part out So I'm so glad we beat it. I'm so glad we just continue on the story and let's Continue and see what's about to happen. Great. <laughs> Is everyone to level up? Yep. Oh, only two. Whew, glad that's over. Man, I wasn't expecting something like that to just pop out of nowhere, but I didn't have any trouble linking up with my Arcus, so I called this field test a rousing success. Maybe it's because I got Lemmy, but it didn't seem all that tough. Well, you two alone was definitely a big help, that's for sure. Yeah, we definitely need her in, um, on her side for this battle. Still, the garden of each successive floor seems more powerful than the one before. We need to exercise caution if we need to continue our investigations. Oh, I agree. Still. There's no tremor this time. Huh? What tremor? Yeah, now that I mentioned it, it was after we heard the tremor that the red door appeared last time. Huh? Really? Doesn't seem like anything's happening this time, though. Well, we're sitting here looking at a dead end, so it's... So, let's get out of here already. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, it's probably evening by now. Let's head out, then. Keep your eyes peeled for anything that looks different, just in case. Something probably does look different. Let's level four! Again, no chest, no nothing, just... Here you go. I should have rested first in case they were about to hit me with like a double whammy boss battle. But they've done that before, which I was so upset about. Where's the... Where's the entrance? Oh, there it is. Thank you. 
with all things considering, I got through this uh, dungeon pretty fast compared to the others. Turn to the surface. Which, I'm um, kind of surprised at because usually the dungeon itself is harder than the boss. So, I'm very surprised about this one. It was surprisingly more easy, but, well, but if you think about it, the dungeon was easy because the boss was super hard for no fucking reason. So, I guess it makes up for it. Was it about to rain outside? Huh? It sure got cloudy while we were in there. Looks like it's gonna rain! Yeah, it looks like the storm's on the way. So Sharon's hunch turned out to be true after all. At this point, I shouldn't even be surprised. Still, that was surprisingly normal for this place. Nothing like that red door this time. Yeah, I kept looking on our way back just to be sure, but nothing really looked too conspicuous. Maybe there's another piece of eternal logic to the old schoolhouse that caused the door in the pseudonym to appear. Yeah, that would make sense. That does seem to follow what we know. Actually, that reminds me of something George said the other day. After all the time he spent with it, he still doesn't understand how that thing was able to move in the first place. So even George? Yeah, whatever technology was used to make that armor, he's never seen anything like it. And if George can't make heads or tails with it, it must be like nothing else out there. Huh, sounds kind of like Lammy. Even I don't know how he moves around. <laughs> My gosh, he doesn't even know how she's controlling the piece of equipment that she's got, she's just kind of like, I don't know how it's moving, but, and nobody seems to know how, but, uh, we get along great. Not that I sense any pressing concern on your part about that. Whoops, I guess we stood around chatting for too long. We better head back, uh, we get hit with a full shower. Yeah, that sounds best. Alright, we'll leave the rest of you fearless leader. Why do people keep thinking I'm some kind of leader? Because you are. You're a fearless leader. There's leaders across the land. Uh-oh. What's happening? So, this is the place Grants is talking about, huh? It does seem like there's gotta be something here. But I don't think... But I don't think Force alone is gonna cut it. Million? Sorry, cut. So she did know something about the school. She just didn't want to tell us. Sewer Bell as reward. Yes. I don't know what it does. Receive one additional bonding point. Ooh. So I get to bond with another person. Who shall be the lucky chosen one? What are our options? We got Fee. We got Machias. Oh, we got Toa? We don't get Toa often. We really don't. I think I'm gonna go with Toa. Just because, like, we, we really don't get her as an, a bonding option that often. So let's head over. Oh, man. I can't run faster because I have the umbrella and won't let me, like, switch it out. Me, personally, I don't mind a, the light rain because of my hair. It just makes my hair curly. <laughs> it doesn't, like, mess up my hair like other like other people. So I'm like, yay! When it rains hard, mm -mm. Are you looking for a book? Yeah, I was thinking about staying up on Crossbow again. I'll be attending the trade conference, so I want to be sure I go and prepare. Uh -huh. Somehow I'm not surprised. Hopefully everything goes well for you. Ah, uh, well, Prince Oliver and the Chancellor will be the ones doing all the hard work. But thanks, I'll make sure to be the best staff member I can be. I should lend her hand with finding the book she needs. Yes. Need a hand finding all the books you're looking for? I wonder if we get to fight with Toa. I mean, since we got a bonding point, I would think so. Or unless this is like a, you know, like a love entrance uh, option, maybe. It's either one of the two. Well, let's see. And, but, I mean, she's in a military academy, which means she has some fighting capability. You mean it? <laughs> Thanks. It's kind of tough for me to get books off the higher shelves. You take that section, I'll take this one. Oh, on it. Reen took to his list and started to search for all the crossbow related books that she needed. Let's see. Politics, economics, section, the cross spell problem. God, that's the last one. Now, where is she? Almost, just a little farther. Uh oh. Toa. Aha! 
Oh, we're having another waifu moment. Yes, we are. Oh my. And then she blushes. And then she realizes that Reen might be the one. We're having another one of those, uh, those cliche anime moments. I'm so glad I made it in time. Are you okay? Reen. No, I'm fine. Phew, that was a relief. <laughs> you really got my back, don't you? Uh, I feel the same about you. It's not just my back you've got. It's everyone at the academies. Ah! Toy made a fluster escape from Reen's arms. Uh, I'm sorry. I was so careless of me. No worries. I'm just glad you weren't injured. And the next time you want a book from one of the higher shelves, just ask me to go get it for you. Sure. sure. Phew. Well, those are all the books I need. Thanks for the help, Reen. Anytime. It's almost like taking part in the drink off. It's going to be a lot of work. You can say that again. It's going to deal with a lot of challenging... Sensitive issues that heavily involve Erebonia. As long as I'm part of the team, I want to be useful as possible. That's that's some real dedication. No matter how much I study, though, I'm still really nervous. Sure, they asked me to go, but at the end of the day, I'm just a student. What can someone like me do at a major international conference like this? It all sounds pretty daunting, but I'm sure you're going to be fine. All you do is it be yourself. Um, I think you're going to have to be a bit more specific. Well, you're always supporting us from the behind the scenes so we can achieve our full potential. No, no, every student here knows that you're there for us. I can't overstate how reassuring it is to have your support. Bring the support to the conference and the staff will thank their lucky stars that they thought to bring you along. You really think so? I wouldn't say so if I didn't. You've got what, you've got to have more faith in yourself. Besides, if you ever need help, I'll be there to back you up. Just try not to fall off of any more ladders. Yeah, I suppose you're right. If I'm going to have people relying on me, I'm going to project an air of confidence and steer clear of high bookshelves. Thanks, Rain. I think I need a bit more positivity. I'm glad more my rambling cheered you up. This is a big deal to be sure, but remember that you've always got us to fall back on. We'll all be waiting to celebrate your success when you get back. <laughs> I can't wait. Bowman Toy Strengthen is level one, right? Oh, it didn't even tell me. God dang. It's getting dark, so if I just go to my room now, I'll be in for the night. Returning to the dorm room during the evening of the free day cause to end any bonus which have not been triggered will no longer be available. Into the dorm. Welcome back, Master Reen. I'm glad I didn't have to talk for this. Hey there, Sharon. I hope the sudden shower didn't catch you too unaware. Would you like me to fetch you a dry change of clothes? Nah, I'll survive. Thanks to your warning this morning, I was able to avoid the worst of the downpour. I'm amazed you were able to tell a storm was coming that far in advance, though. <laughs> Chairman Arena takes a lot of business trips, so I'm used to keeping an eye on the weather. Never being caught unawares is just one of the maids' many responsibilities. I can't really picture any other maids holding themselves to such an unrealistic standard. Right. I'll let you know when dinner is ready. So just wait in your room until then. I expect the meal will take a little longer to prepare than usual today. Oh? How come? Well, with two new residents in the dormitory, I thought I might make tonight's dinner a little fancier than usual. A welcoming feast of sorts for them. Really? That sounds like a great idea. I'm looking forward to it already. Anything I can help you with for it? Oh, could you? I'm actually short a few ingredients, so I was just about to step out to buy what I need. I'd be happy to run to the market for you, then. Green, always so nice and willing to help people. It's still coming down out there. Might as well go back out while I'm still damp, right? Don't worry about me. I don't mind. <laughs> well, if you insist, I'd be happy to take you up on your kind offer. Green receives a shopping list and some There's mirror. List everything I'd like you to buy. That should be exactly enough mirror to cover the expense. All right. I'll be back soon then. <laughs> Take care out there. Oh, there's more already. Looks like the rain must have stopped while I was inside. It's gotten pretty dark out too. I'd better get back to the dorm. Oh. Hello. 
Is this Misty? Oh, it is! Oh. I know I've recognized you her voice. You wouldn't happen to be one of the Class 7 students from Thor's, would you? Out for a little late night shopping, are we? You could say that, but how did you know I'm from Class 7? Maybe because you just came out of the dorm? <laughs> You're one of the favorite topics at our radio station, actually. There are plenty of people out there who want to know more about Thor's dashing guys and gals in red. Oh, you work at the radio station? I think I've seen you around town a couple times in the early morning. Oh, really? By the time morning rolls around, I'm usually so out of it. I hope I didn't look like I was about ready to keel over. N no, not at all. Hold on. Your voice sounds so familiar. Oh, maybe you know me from the radio? <clears throat> She's about to do her radio voice. Good evening, everyone. This summer's turning into a real scorcher, isn't it? To beat the heat, we're going to be broadcasting tonight from a park here in Trista. <laughs> Ring any bells? Wait. Huh? Y you're Misty? From Abin time? <laughs> Finally, Misty. Bingo. You must be quite the avid listener, recognizing my voice so easily. And it even gave her her own intro. Misty. Glad to know I've got a faithful fan out there. Wow. I never figured I'd meet Misty herself. Especially like this. <laughs> I always make sure to catch up in time. It helps me relax while I'm studying. <laughs> Thanks. But it sure is serendipitous, you know? Having a chance encounter like this, just after the rains eased up. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't mention this on tonight's show. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that I really constitute a noteworthy topic for a radio broadcast. It's kind of weird. I only know her from Abin time, but she seems just as friendly face to face. Hmm? Is something the matter? You're staring at me so intently, I feel a little embarrassed. Um, well, forgive me if this sounds a little odd, but... This isn't actually our first meeting, is it? If I'm not mistaken, we met once before. I think when he first came into the academy, I in think. In a hotel in Heimdall. <gasps> oh no! Is she the opera singer that we were like meeting up so many times? <laughs> wow, I can't believe it. I never figured anyone would actually catch on. Holy shit, I didn't even catch that! I think it's because of the clothes. Like she looks so different and her, her vibe is so different when you meet Misty and then you meet the opera singer, they're totally different two vibes, even with the even with the costume shit. I, I didn't put two and two together. Holy crap. If if his friends, especially Elliot, if Elliot or Marcus ever finds out that he knows not only the opera singer as a friend, but has met her literally her other alias and that she works in Trista, they would lose their minds. Don't tell them, Rain. <laughs> I knew it, opera singer. So you really are her. The Azure Diva herself, Vita Clotilde. Right you are once again. Honestly, even the people I work with at the radio station don't seem to have noticed, so I'm surprised you could tell. That makes two of us. I almost didn't say anything because it just seemed too implausible. But if you don't mind me asking, how did a star like you end up working at Radio Trista? <laughs> it's just a little something I do for fun on the side. Gotta spice life up a bit, right? Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. You can be a big star in any other industry and have a side hobby or two, or a side hustle still. Nothing wrong with it at all. The best part is, the people at the Opera House in Heimdall have no idea I come here to do my show every week. So don't go telling anyone, okay? It'll be our secret. How do you even manage that schedule? Because you live in Trista, and Heimdall's a, a couple hour train right away like do you have a private jet hidden somewhere like and you do it all night but you're the diva at the day you I mean you need a lot of coffee in your life uh, of course i wouldn't dream of it i'm amazed no one else has figured it out though it's not like you use a different voice when you're on the radio well there's a little trick to it <laughs> 
You're not the only one who was surprised, though. Huh? Get up close and personal. I had this feeling I'd seen you before, but I couldn't put my finger on where. But it's you, isn't it? He's like, what does that mean? Anyway, I have to get over to the studio now. Oh, and be sure to tune in to tonight's Aubin time. It'll be a fun one. Promise. W wouldn't miss it. <laughs> and give my regards to those two, would you? Ellie <laughs> and Marcus. Oh my god, they would lose their fucking minds. Freaking do not tell them that you... <sighs> ah! They would go crazy. And then they'll probably punch Ring for not telling them sooner. But don't tell them. They would probably stalk the radio station. She smells like... Lavender? The fragrance really suits her. So Vita Clotilde herself has been hosting a radio show in Trista. Even if I told them, I don't think they'd believe me. Yeah, they probably wouldn't, but... Oh, welcome back. Oh, hey there, Emma. Did you just get back too? Yeah, I just returned a short while ago. Were you out shopping? Yeah, Sharon asked me to go out and pick up a few things for dinner. Though I ended up taking a bit longer than I expected. Wait, do I smell lavender on you? H how It's not like she hugged me this or anything. Is perfume, isn't it? How did it get up to you? Oh, right. I guess I must have soaked up the scent too. She did get pretty close. That's the only thing I can think of. Um, Reen, I can only hope the reason you ended up taking longer than expected isn't because you were... Whoa, 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 hold on. You've got the wrong idea, Emma. I just happened to bump into someone I know while I was out, that's all. Nothing scandalous, nothing I'd be ashamed of. <laughs> I never said it was. Though, you do seem strangely defensive for a man who has nothing to hide. Because of your face, you literally gave him like, I swear to God, I never took you as the fooling around type, but if you were messing around with girls, like, if you give a guy the face, then he's immediately gonna get defensive and be like, no, no, I wasn't doing it, I swear. Huh, I wonder what would happen if Elise and the other girls were to catch wind of this. Oh my God, they would raise fucking havoc is what would happen. I swear, I just ran into someone I know after I left the store. Nothing happened. You just like raking me over the coals, don't you? <laughs> she just burst out. Oh, Master Reen. I see you've returned. Were you able to get everything I asked for? S sure did. Let me bring it over. Lavender. Okay, Emma, why are you so concerned with the scent? Huh. No, that's impossible. Why? People wear lavender perfume. Afterward, Reen decided to give Sharon a hand with the cooking. And when dinner was ready, everyone sat down and enjoyed an especially extravagant meal in celebration of Crow Millennium's joining Class 7. Breaking news, terrorist attack follow-up. A representative for Imperial Family has spoken regarding the aftermath of the terrorist attack, which took place in Hymville recently. The spokesperson confirmed that Princess Alfin, who was placed in the greatest danger on that day, has sustained no serious injuries and was able to return to school as usual. Who is the Imperial Liberation Front? The recent terrorist attack placed both Prince and Princess Alfin in danger and resulted in Imperial Governor Regnans sustaining injuries. While it may not seem that peace has returned to the streets of Heimdall, the culprits behind this unspeakable act, who call themselves the Imperial Liberation Front, have yet to be apprehended. The elite force responsible for the capture, the Railway Military Police, insist that they are doing everything in their power to find them. Thanks to those who helped, chaos may not have reigned in Heimdall on the day of the attack, but it did not stop a number of people from doing their part and bringing the situation under control. Each of these courageous souls has received a letter of thanks from the Imperial government. Extra special thanks are due to one young student who took 
commands to restore calm in Drekkel's Plaza, and a group of civilians who succeed in rescuing Princess Alfin from harm's way. These people have received particular appreciation for their deeds. And it just goes on and on. Now, guys, if you guys want to, you guys can just pause the video and read the rest. I didn't expect it for there to go so, that long. West Samaria Trade Conference is just over a week away now. Building that tall is exactly what you'd expect from an economic powerhouse like Crossbelt 2. <sighs> it's a big world out there. Still, we've got Milliam and Crow as classmates now. Who would have seen that coming? Crow opened up to us right from the start. Though I guess that's just Crow for you. And Milliam's become way more attached to us than I thought she would too. They were both able to form combat links with us right from day one. I had my concerns about how well they'd mesh with the class, but maybe I was worried for nothing after all. Oh, so you're gonna do that with your mind? You don't have to lift up your arm or anything? August 18th, and we're winding down a busy day here at 9 p.m. I'm here to give you all the cool you need to beat this summer heat. Hey, looks like I'm not too late to catch this week's oven time. Seems like those hot summer days keep coming with no end in sight, doesn't it? But even this heat can't stop the momentum behind the West Amuria Trade Conference being held in Crossbell later this month. Prince Olivert and Chancellor Osborne will be in attendance for this watershed moment in international business. <laughs> Personally, I'm more interested in the view from the top of that famous new skyscraper the talks are being held in. In some news closer to home, you all have probably noticed the summer showers we're getting here in Trista. The rain's let up for now, but it's managed to push that nasty nighttime humidity right off the chart. It's nights like these I wish I could smuggle an ice-cold beer into the studio. And the director is chilling over there, drink in hand, mocking me. But you know what? Forget that guy. <laughs> Just like, huh, must be nice. Anyway, for all you students out there, your summer vacation's probably wrapping up, so I hope you made the most of it. Wait, I forgot that summer vacation at the military academy has already come and gone. Whoops. Still, it's never too late to do something bold that'll keep your memories of this summer burning bright. Hmm. And what about you, Miss Misty? You're probably asking yourselves. Well, you might want to sit down for this one. Because fate had a romantic rendezvous in store for yours truly just on the way to the studio today. No! Don't do it! <laughs> a tryst with a young man in a park after sunset. Droplets of rain clinging to the grass. I'll treasure the memory forever. No! <laughs> no! Misty, why? Don't do it. <laughs> why? That is not what happened. Oh my god. I should cry for the young man at Park after sunset. She's basically like doing an auto book for like a, a fan fiction. <laughs> He's gonna look at that radio and be like, what the hell is she saying? Or I would, if I hadn't just made it up on the spot. Chalk it up to a dreamer's poetic license, I guess. You're a liar. <laughs> oh my god. I'm surprised Reen did not react to that. Just be like, what the hell is she saying on the radio right now? Still, maybe one day I'll feel the thrilling rush of a summer love. Gotta keep the fire burning. <laughs> look, look at her, he's like, oh Was god. She talking about when I ran into her earlier tonight? She's got quite the playful personality. Though somehow that doesn't come as too much of a surprise. <laughs> It's kind of weird thinking that I just met her on the street a couple hours ago. Anyway, I have to get over to the studio now. Oh, and be sure to tune in to tonight's Aubin time. It'll be a fun one. Promise. W wouldn't miss it. <laughs> and give my regards to those two, would you? Those two? I didn't really think about it right then, but who was she talking about? Her two biggest fans. Oh, wh what's happening now? What is happening now? 
There's so much. There's so much going on. Oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> He changed up his outfit, I think. Ah, so you've arrived. Good to see you, boss. Oh, it's the big buff dude. Oh, you're awfully early. Oh, and her too. Well met, Comrade V, Comrade X. I see that you've finished all your preparations as well. Smooth as silk. Although you're the one who'll be taking center stage in our next operation without a doubt. Who'd have thought you'd volunteer to go pound the pavement and cross? The Red Constellation are gonna be there. I still think I'm the prime choice for this one. I disagree. As I can no longer rely on the power of the flute, it makes the most sense for me to go. Especially when you consider the very real possibility that we may have to accept a necessary sacrifice for the greater good. Oh, uh, so he, he knows that he might die or get arrested, so he's like, hey. Someone has to go down for this, and because I can't use the flute, I'm pretty much useless besides my strategic mind. So, it's best for me to go. That is the best way for us to achieve what we desire. You're serious? Ugh. You really are too morose for your own good. I could say the same of both of you. Why else would you have willingly plunged yourselves into a struggle like this to begin with? <laughs> I suppose you're right. <laughs> You got us there. I see you've all gathered. Comrade C. Fashionably late, but worth the wait. That makes it a full house. I appreciate your gathering, comrades. The wheels have been set in motion. There is no place for hesitation. No time for looking back. I swear, freaking Dark Vader. We seek all the results. I couldn't agree more. No objections here, either. Goes without saying. That said, I will ask you but once. Comrade G, are you certain this is the path you would walk? <laughs> my heart itself beats with the ideals of the Liberation Front. If my life should see its end in Crossbell, so what? Oh, so he's literally prepared to die. The tyrant must be stopped from creating the vile dystopia he seeks. Dear little cost maybe. If through our efforts we or anyone anywhere succeeds in that aim, we will have our victory. Very well. May the goddess, or perhaps powers less fair, attend you. When this is over and our victory won, let us toast our success together in the Imperial Capital. Indeed. Oh, he's disguised as another, like, soldier. Farewell, my comrades. He doesn't know how to express how he feels, but I understand. Losing your place in the world for doing what's right. And throwing yourself into the eye of the storm. It ain't something I could do. Different paths brought each of us here, but the road we travel now is the same. Let us depart, Comrade X, Comrade V. We each have our own part to play in what is to come. Of course. Just leave it to us. Is someone spying on them again? <coughs> or two airships? Oh, then one of them must have G in it. <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna stop it right. Oh, god dang it! And, uh, enjoyed the video it was longer than usual but you know it's okay it's okay I just want to beat the game at this point I just want to go enjoy the game beat the game so I can go after the other games in the series because I heard they're very good and I want to play them but a lot has happened in this episode uh, 
a lot has happened. I was not expecting the movie. I should have, but I wasn't expecting it. It's still caught me off guard. But, you know, it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed that freaking boss battle that was a pain in my ass. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. See you later.